my name is Gar Punnett. I'm the Chief of Staff at Briefly. Uh, this role is a fun role uh, for any team. Uh, a Chief of Staff is someone who uh, gets to look over the team and try to think of the best options for both uh, what the team needs and what my colleagues need, as much as what the company needs and what the future vision might be for the company. Um, it's, I really enjoyed my job um, working at a, a software company, which means we create software products for larger organizations. But our goal is actually to actually bring what's known as the circular economy to more people. A circular economy is focused on reducing the environmental impacts so the negative impacts that might come from uh, harmful manufacturing processes, like everything we create um, actually has a, a negative impact. And that's fine because it, you can use it. Um, if we talk about the chair that you're sitting in right now, um, it has a useful purpose. Its purpose is to let you sit and to let you um, actually learn. Um, that's it's actually it's, its role and it's in its job. Um, but in order to make that chair, it actually took a fair amount of manufacturing. So if someone has a job in which they uh, create that chair um, so that you could sit in it. Now, why that's both a good thing and a bad thing is what it, or, what it took to take materials out of the earth. So we, we take out oil, we take out metal, um, we create plastic out of oil, and we manufacture the metal to turn it into whatever type of chair you might be sitting in. And when we do that, it creates these uh, both environmental impacts that uh, push uh, maybe negative impacts. So there might be emissions like carbon dioxide, which you might be familiar with. It pushes um, certain materials out to the environment, which might sit in land and cause certain negative effects. Um, and then in terms of other emissions, it can generally be harmful uh, to um, uh, the, the air that we breathe in, um, in certain communities. So what a circular economy is focused on doing is actually reducing the amount of materials that we're taking out of the environment and reducing the impact associated with manufacturing by using materials that we already have. Um, so our job is to, uh, in a circular economy, is to try to take as many materials that exist, and you might be familiar with recycling, and recycling is one of those efforts that are great because it's turning what is considered by maybe a waste product into some other good. Um, we could actually turn your chair into another chair. And this is helpful because it actually reduces the overall impact of all of the manufacturing that we do in the United States, all of the manufacturing that we do across the world. And so our job is to actually be more efficient when it comes to manufacturing. Why is the circular economy important uh, to you? Well, I think it's um, our job to create systems that no longer negatively impact the world around us. That's hard to do. Um, it may even be uh, impossible to do to the 100% um, level. But if we can get to the 50% level of achieving our goal, to the 70 to 80% goal of achieving um, a more sustainable, so environmentally friendly, socially impactful, and also economically profitable type systems, then we're actually gonna come a long way in terms of solving the big headline issues that we're all hearing about, which is uh, climate change, which might be a significant um, sort of social issues. Um, that there's actually more opportunity for us if we focus on being a more sustainable economy um, where more people are um, actually uh, driving down their negative impacts, both personally, but then also at a company level. Reaply is a software company where we design software for our large partners and clients. Um, we essentially uh, have one product that allows our clients to share items with um, internal to their own, op own operation. So what that might look like is think of your classroom as an organization. Um, 
Think of your school, actually. Uh, I'm gonna erase that example. Think of your school as an organization. Well, at your school, uh, believe it or not, there might actually be chairs sitting in a closet somewhere that maybe no one knows it's there. Um, they might be sitting in storage, no one's really seen them in a while, but they're actually ready for use. Um, but they just need to be discovered. They need some sort of platform that allows uh, uh, someone to say, oh, I actually need those chairs. Let me use them for my classroom. And so our platform is focused on actually the ability to list these items that are no longer being used and finding homes for them um, across communities. So that could be a classroom to a school, to a local nonprofit or small business. Um, it, it can really be um, used for discovery of these assets, but then making sure that they're actually being used across these communities. The chief of staff role is a highly collaborative, um, creative position. As a chief of staff, I'm focused on um, both the success of the team, so uh, allowing my colleagues to flourish in whatever they're doing, um, and also allowing our company to uh, uh, continue to be successful in its own mission. To break that down, that means on a day-to-day -day basis, I might be meeting with someone so that they can um, talk through an idea that they have uh, around creating a new solution for a company. Um, guiding them through maybe some sort of thought process where that allows their creativity to flourish, um, allows me to uh, give some of my creative um, uh, influence on that type of idea, but then together actually come up with something that can benefit um, one of our clients. Um, this is a, a, a leadership type role that is really based on service. So how can I be of service both to our CEO and help him do his role uh, better, as well as, again, um, allowing the company and, and being, uh, essentially being there for the company in any way that's necessary. So that might be um, working on a pitch to Amazon, that might be working on um, a solution internal for internal processes around our uh, credit cards. Um, whatever, it, whatever this, role needs, I'm sort of of service to that. And whatever the company needs, I'm of service to that and trying to figure out the next big challenge to solve. When I was in school, and I hope to continue to be in school, um, I, uh, it's actually funny, I didn't, um, <laughs> I, I didn't love school as much as I, as I did when I grew up, um, essentially. Um, that uh, I, I really loved school in my elementary years. High school, um, there were always challenges. Um, I was balancing sports. I was balancing a social life with also trying to achieve um, academic uh, success. Um, and, and sometimes all of those um, priorities um, conflicted and they were tough to handle. Um, I would actually put high school and put uh, uh, college with some of the toughest years of my life because it's hard to balance all of it. Um, but once I started to get to really get the hang of it, um, I really found myself liking um, a study called economics. And economics is this idea that we can combine mathematics with um, uh, a theory of how our uh, economy works. So how does how do corporations work? How are jobs created? How are um, you might have heard already theories around supply and demand? So all of the toys and um, gadgets and, and cars, how do they come over into our economy and how are they used to generate more positive impacts in our economy? So that's the study of economics. Now what I was missing in economics in college um, was actually a sense of, um, frankly, social priority and environmental priority. So what is social priority? Well, social priority is this idea that we actually should be focusing on um, the 
uh, the workforce that makes up um, our manufacturing community or the workforce that makes up any sort of entity that designs goods or services. So uh, when we talk about what does it mean to be more socially impactful, it's actually, um, you know, some examples, and I, we're not getting too political here, um, some examples might be raising the minimum wage. So what does that mean to raise the minimum wage? Well, it means more families, more communities might actually be able to benefit from our economy and might actually be able to spend more money, um, live a better life. And so that was the idea behind living more socially impactful is how we actually increase social priority. Um, on the other side of that too, of economic, I was fascinated with decreasing environmental impact. Well, I've already spoken about that, but again, in summary, really how do we decrease the negative impacts of our economy? So the combination of um, trying to study systems that are profitable, combining those with systems that are more socially focused and, and embrace people and support people, as well as decreasing environmental impacts, creates actually what is known as a more sustainable economy. And that sort of pursuit of a more sustainable economy is what ultimately I became more obsessed with. Um, I had to go through more of a, of a journey though to really find out what I was really meant to do and I believe I've, I've found that. But I got to do some cool stuff along the way and coming out of, of, of college, I was able to actually focus on uh, a different passion. And um, uh, I was actually focused on entertainment television. So I was producing um, television with uh, Miss Oprah Winfrey. And that was a great experience because I got to see what a real leader looked like. Um, she was an amazing uh, person to work with, um, but ultimately um, it wasn't my dream job. I knew I wasn't meant to produce television because I was so drawn to this idea of how do we um, decrease our environmental footprint? How do we actually design systems that are better for the world? Um, and, and that's just the natural part of everyone's journey when you're trying to figure out what you want to do in life is trying a little bit of this, trying a little bit of that, but never stopping to say, oh, um, I, I can't do something. You can always do whatever you, you really put your mind to. And so um, trying a little bit of this, trying a little bit of that allowed me to really find my next passion. And when, it's, when I really found my next passion, I knew that I needed to go back to school. And I uh, was lucky enough to be able to go back to school, um, frankly, uh, after losing my job. Um, so uh, that's also a, a, a totally fine benefit to, um, to just natural courses of events. Um, and so when I, I, I lost a job, um, I basically was like, you know what? This is a perfect opportunity. I get to now go back to school and really stu study something that I'm, I'm passionate about. Um, and uh, from there, I got to then study sustainability, study circular economy, and become a real student again. Um, and that was a great joy in my life, to be able to really read and dive into material that I was very passionate about. And then that's when I actually, once I graduated from my master's program, I was able to find another job at this current startup, which is Reboot, and begin to help grow the team and grow the mission here that we're doing today. I firmly believe that this is what a future city will look like. Um, a, a future city is going to look more connected. Right now, our systems, as, um, as much as they seem like they're a part of this big um, organism almost, a city sort of lives and breathes and acts um, in various ways that people are always trying to understand. And it's a combination of um, politics, a combination of economics, a combination of social priority, um, and then just natural fluctuations in populations. But ultimately, um, cities aren't very connected. Um, and there's lots of breakdowns in systems and processes. So a future city, and something that I'm very passionate about, is how are we connecting dots? How are we allowing a, a city to actually be more resilient? Um, and resiliency in cities is super important. It's actually super important with climate change uh, more and more on the horizon. Uh, as our shifting climates are gonna create more potentially disruptive storms, are gonna create uh, migrations of populations, you'll need cities that are more connected and ability to be flexible in order to either address an emergency 
or um, naturally uh, grow and decline in, in population. Um, now we're talking over decades, um, but still we don't have those systems in place. And so what that might look like are different um, inter internet of things, um, technologies. So that's just a, a, a buzzy word for um, items that are connected to the internet that can actually um, uh, process data more efficiently and send information where it needs to go in order, so that as citizens we can act upon it, as politicians, as our leaders and officials can act upon that information. Um, but creating those systems is tough and it's actually merging different systems into one another so that more systems can speak with one another. That's how we gain knowledge around what's happening in the city. So our future cities are going to be more resilient. They're going to be more connected. Um, you know, and, and that's going to be, again, um, everything from water, uh, being more efficient with our water, more connected with our own water systems. Um, that's going to be uh, sun uh, in terms of solar. Um, that might even be geothermal systems. There, there are hosts of systems, um, uh, smart grid systems for transportation. Um, I'm a big believer that, uh, uh, you know, we you know, we won't have as many cars on the road as we will in the future. I, I believe that there, there will be last mile transportation. So more bikes and scooters will be available in cities. Um, fewer cars, but more buses, more trains um, will be available in more cities. And overall, that's gonna, again, result in connecting more people to the system um, and doing that in ways that, again, decrease the impact on our communities, but then increase also our standard of living across the community. It might be really easy to say collaboration is key. Um, it is key. Um, to drill down deeper into that, you have to trust um, your teammates. Um, I, I, early in my own career, I thought, oh, you know, and I think we all suffer from this sometimes, is, is thinking, oh, I know that. I know how this can go forward. Um, I know because this person doesn't know. But actually the best results that I've had come from um, releasing that understanding, not necessarily being so tied down to what I know. Because the best product can actually come from when you trust your partner, when you trust your teammates. Um, they're gonna give you ideas that you hadn't thought of and you're gonna give them ideas that they hadn't thought of. Which is ultimately, in that communication, is gonna create a better project. It's gonna create a better outcome, both for this little exercise or this month-long project or whatever you might be doing. And we'll give you the tools though to actually be more collaborative and start to solve bigger issues um, either in high school or college or the future careers that you will all have. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to me. I've had so much fun sharing some knowledge and sharing some experience with you all. Uh, good luck with everything that you guys are about to accomplish and, and embark on with this Future Cities project. Um, and uh, congratulations, and I thank you so much again for listening. So nice to meet you all, at least digitally. Uh, feel free, if there's, any, if there's any opportunity for you to ever reach out, um, feel free to hit me up on LinkedIn, whenever you all are on LinkedIn. Have a good one.